Hello, uh, welcome to the the nuke, the composting part of the tutorial. Well, um, the render seems to be finished. Uh, this one has a different name because I used a different scene to render it a little bit earlier. Um, as you can see, the render started at half past one and it ended around eight. So that's uh, that's about six uh, and a half hours of uh, rendering. Um, so yeah, better do this overnight. I should have told you this in the previous tutorial, but uh, who cares. Well, let's uh, composite this stuff. I'm uh, opening Nuke X. Doesn't matter if it's X or normal Nuke. Hold on, starting up. There we go. Okay, I'll just click and drag this folder over here. Okay. But first, let's set the frame rate to 25 and the resolution. I, I, I exit this menu uh, by uh, hitting S, by the way, it's for the project settings. And let's set the resolution to 720p. Okay, there we go. Now, let's start. Let's look at the renders first. Okay, this is the Krakato one. Looking beautiful. As you can see, it's a little bit more pale. That's because of the gamma issues. If you put this on 4.3, then it should be the same as uh, what we had in uh, Maya. I do not know how to fix this in uh, Maya and Krakato at the moment, but uh, who cares? It works. We have the velocity pass. This empty motion pass you can just delete. It's no, we don't need it, need it anymore. With the reflection pass and just the beauty, the main render, the VRay render. Well, let's get started. Okay, I um, create a grade node by hitting the G button and then I connect it to the main beauty. I view the grade node by hitting one. Uh, what we want to do is uh, decrease the gamma of this one. Let's put this on 48. Yeah, that's pretty good. Something like that. You can just improvise this uh, and see what you think looks good. Okay. Put the gain at 1.5, 1.15, and the gamma at 0 0.5. Okay, that's good. Now let's play this back a little bit further. Looks better than the previous one. Okay. Now let's, uh, I mean, you can do this uh, really scientifically, knowing exactly which settings you need uh, to be able to do this properly. But uh, in this case, you, it's just, you can just do it by eye. I mean, you're gonna uh, combine everything in a improvised manner. So just don't worry a lot about the settings I'm doing here. Just do it just in a way that you think looks good. I'm, uh, I made a merge node here by hitting M. I connected the B side to the original uh, beauty on the grade, and I connected the A side to the reflection. Uh, let's take a look at the, the node, and I put it to screen. With this we get some extra reflection on top of everything, which is what I did for the previous video, uh, for the video I uh, made a few years ago. Uh, now let's grade this. I made a grade node again by hitting G. Put this in line. Okay. It's just gonna create this till this looks decent. I mean, this is too much, of course, and then bring it back a little. I like it like this. Okay, cool. Now, let's get some motion blurring up in this bitch. Made a shuffle copy node. Uh, yeah, plug the two uh, straight in the, the composite we just did here. Uh, over here, the two just goes out in here and just whoop, shoots out over there. You can uh, just tell it to uh, copy out the red, green, blue, and alpha channels just straight through. Just and we'll do this. Then we'll plug in into one the vectors, and I'll tell it to copy the vectors to a motion channel. It's like that. 
and then I'll tell it to take the colors from one like this. Okay, now it will uh, copy it from one poof, into a motion channel. You can test this by just looking at the shuffle copy. You can go to this window, click a motion, and there it is. Now we have the motion channel in line with the rest of the uh, composite. Let's add a vector blur. Okay, let's look at the vector blur. Tell it to use, uh, for the UV channels, use motion. There we go, it's already st starting to look good, but as you can see, it doesn't look good yet, perfect yet. Set the method to forward, then it gets, gets layered on top. And we define an alpha, RGB, RGB uh, alpha. Now it looks good and smooth. If you disable this, see, it's a big difference. Now it looks perfect. Let's multiply it by 0.5. So we uh, get a less extreme effect. Looks okay. Okay, now let's uh, add the Krakatoa render on top. Make a merge node. Plug the B into the original uh, footage and I put, uh, plug the A into what Krakatoa uses. Okay, well let's uh, look at it. Well, now it's already integrated. Now, let's create the Krakatoa to fit in better. I just used over here, but you can put it on something else like screen. Plus, just see what happens and what works for you. It's all about if it looks good or not. Just experiment with this. Matt already looks quite good, but uh, let's put it to plus. Now let's uh, grade the, the Krakatoa stuff. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. And let's put the gamma down a little bit. Okay, and let's gain it back up. This way you increase the contrast which is something that I quite like on uh, most renders. And well, let's multiply some green in there, a little bit of green. It's a little bit too much. So take some red out. Just do whatever you feel looks good. You can make it totally crazy, of course. Let's see what it looks like in motion. That's pretty interesting already. Well, maybe desaturate a little bit. Okay. Well, that's your basic integration already. I'm going to do a really quick render. I'll just skip ahead. Okay, it's almost finished uh, previewing. Let's take a look. Okay, that's pretty close to what I had before. Of course, on my uh, original video, I spent uh, a few days of optimizing everything, tweaking it to make it look good and placing uh, extra rim lights and those kind of things. That's not what I... Uh, what I was going to show you in this tutorial. This is basically just about the basic workflow. Uh, so yeah, you can make it look a lot better. This, this is already pretty cool, right? I like it. Okay, now let's do some other small tricks. Something that I did on my previous thing. Let's select the correct frame for this, maybe this one. Okay, I'm going to grade everything. And I'm going to grade it by a roto. So, I plugged it into the mask, created my roto. I hold control on the vertices over here to uh, feather it. As you can see, if I view this and then hit A for the alpha channel. So this is pretty handy, works really well. You have to be careful that if you move your timeline now and you move the roto, then you're going to set some keyframes here. So everything is going to move, you can delete them with these tools. Or you can just view it in the curve editor. 
Okay, I'm watching the alpha now. Disable alpha again. Increasing the gamma, increasing the gain a little bit, and maybe playing a little bit with the colors, adding some green in the gamma, and taking out some red. Okay, and let's add a background. I'll add a merge node, plug B into the main thing. Make another roto. Make another box. Plug A into the roto. Just take a look at the roto. Oh, you don't have to take a look. I have to set this roto instead of alpha to RGBA. So you, then you make a, as you can see, a white solid. Go to the merge. I'll put the merge on under. And I'll do the same thing as I did before. Create something like this. I'll select the add vertices to the what's it called? Add points tool and make a nice curve in the middle over here. And put this way down of the merge. This is perfect, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, watch it begin. Maybe a little bit uh, too light. Can, oh, just like this. Oh, fuck, shit. I uh, got to get the selection tool in. There we go. Yeah, it's better. This button, you clear the tools. This uh, saves memory and uh, saves you clutter on the right side. Okay. That's pretty epic, right? Now, one last thing, add a glow. I'm known for this, I'm famous for adding glows to stuff. But yeah, it works. Put the tolerance of the glow up quite high and the tint down quite a lot. If you want it to be quite subtle. Now the glow is also working on the background, which isn't a normal workflow. Uh, but in this case, it works. Well, there we go. There we have our uh, integrated real flow V ray. And Krakatoa uh, render uh, animation, and it looks pretty cool, if you ask me. I um, hope that you learned uh, a lot from this tutorial. It's my first tutorial, tutorial, so it was a little bit difficult for me to organize everything. But um, yeah, if you have any tips about how I uh, uh, handled this tutorial, please uh, give me some feedback. I'd love some feedback, and most importantly, I'd love to see the end results of all your stuff. So if anybody made uh, any part of this tutorial or did a complete tutorial, please show it to me, send it to me, please do. That would be awesome. I'd love to see that. Uh, well, yeah, this is it, I guess. Uh, the last thing that's uh, left is uh, rendering it. And I'll do that just for a little bit. Let's write this out. I like to write my stuff out to TGA sequences and then allow later in After Effects I can turn it into a QuickTime. Um, new folder. Nuke. And yeah, well, let's call it. Underscore TGA. Now let's. Uh, at percent zero four D for uh, frame numbers and oh, I forgot to save this. Let's save this. Let's go.
Well, thank you for uh, viewing this tutorial with me. And uh, I hope uh, it worked. I've already said these things before, but uh, please send it to me. Goodbye, guys.